Hello, everybody, and welcome to U.S. Farm Report. This program is seen on this station each week at this same time. My special guest this week is the president of the National Farmers Organization, Mr. Oren Lee Staley. Oren Lee, we've had our uh, new series of U.S. Farm Reports on the air now for a number of weeks, and as you know, I've asked you on numerous occasions to come and appear on this show, and you've been very elusive about the whole thing, but at last I've caught you. Well, Bill, of course, there's a reason for this, and basically the reason is that I believe that in leadership it's teamwork, and that uh, no one individual can be the organization or can be the one that uh, has to have the attention focused on it. I believe that uh, the best thing, uh, in my belief at least, uh, is that uh, we first expose the many qualified leaders that the NFO had, and then uh, reluctantly, finally, I came on. Uh, <laughs> another reason, uh, uh, I enjoy visiting with people, and I enjoy uh, also giving my viewpoints, as well as the organization, on almost any subject that pertains to agriculture. But at the same time, uh, I have a reluctance to go on TV. I'm no uh, TV star <laughs> by any means, and, uh, but nevertheless, I'm glad to be here. Oren Lee, the National Farmers Organization, NFO, has been truly, I think, one of the most controversial organizations in the entire world. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yes, uh, I would agree, Bill. Now, you've been called many things. You've been called militant. You've been called communistic. Uh, what is your uh, reply to all of these charges and to to the charge uh, that uh, you are a controversial organization? Well, first, I think that we have to historically look at uh, any organization or any change that's been brought about in the country. Uh, George Washington or Abraham Lincoln uh, as individuals or movements that have brought about change in this country. Uh, they have been controversial at their time and particularly at their inception. Uh, because if you're going to bring about change, it's uh, by necessity uh, a controversial subject. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were not termed controversial, then I wouldn't feel that we were doing anything because we wouldn't try to be bringing about any change. As far as being militant, uh, I think that this goes in with the same definition of being controversial. As long as you remain within the framework of the laws of this nation, and as long as you respect the rights of others but are, are willing to disagree with uh, their opinions or their philosophies or to wage an economic battle on behalf of people, then I think the word militant uh, is a compliment because then you're doing something yes. about bringing change. As far as communists concerned, uh, this seems to be a worn out word of anybody that happens to disagree with you. Uh, most of the time without substance. Sometimes, uh, of course, probably a substance to it. Uh, but as far as uh, being communistic, uh, the NFO, if anyone understands the philosophy of communism and the philosophy of the NFO, we're at the direct opposite because we're trying to protect individual ownership. We're trying to protect a way of life that maintains uh, private and uh, individual ownership within a free enterprise society. Uh, communism is uh, directly opposite of this. And the other thing, as far as uh, being able to verify uh, the fact that uh, we've been checked out by all government agencies, is that uh, just recently I was called in to be a part of the food and nutrition effort uh, set up by the White House. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, of course, given security clearance uh, when you do <laughs> I this. imagine you are. Uh, I've been to the White House several times. Yeah. Uh, before you go there, uh, you're, you and your organization are given uh, clearance. So there's no substance to these uh, at all. But the main thing is to be controversial and militant in the context uh, that you're changing things or bringing about change, uh, we consider it a compliment. Yes. Orton Lee, NFO is changing, isn't it? A lot of changes have occurred through the years. Well, uh, the change uh, is in the change in methods and the addition. Uh, the change in philosophy or goals? No. Mm -hmm. Uh, the same principles apply that uh, farmers have to develop enough economic power to be able to get into position to compete in today's economy. So they can have something to say about the price they get for their products rather than going to the marketplace and saying, what will you give me? As far as the change in methods, uh, we've added uh, new methods and new strategy. Uh, we have made many changes because uh, as we have 
progressed and built success. And as we brought in new and, uh, and imaginative leadership uh, throughout the NFO at the county, uh, district, state, and national level, uh, this means that uh, in order to reach our goals, uh, we have brought about many changes. The organization, as far as the methods, is much different uh, this year than it was last and much different than it was five years ago. And really what happened is that uh, we started out uh, in a debate, really, over philosophy, a debate of whether collective bargaining was right or whether it was necessary for American agriculture. That debate has been won in our favor. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody now uh, realizes that uh, collective bargaining, bargaining of some type, is necessary in American agriculture to compete today, Bill. Now, then we get down, after the debate was won, of actually putting it into practice, of carrying out the, the uh, steps, uh, meeting the problems, uh, making the changes necessary and adapting uh, to those problems. And this is where you have not only a change, but in a great enlargement. Uh, through each experience uh, so that you meet particular problems. That's, that's where the change uh, is coming about. Well, now, there are several farm organizations in the country. How does NFO differ? What does NFO offer that is uh, exclusive to NFO and different from any other organization in existence? Well, there are so many basic differences, Bill, uh, that I would want to hit on a few of them that are to me, the most vital of um, uh, vital importance. Uh, first, uh, the NFO is made up only of farmers and producers. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a uh, very vital importance. Uh, we cannot go into business. We only have one thing to offer, and that's a service. Now, this is good. Uh, we don't have to, for example, spend our time worrying about a balance sheet on a business uh, as such to make a profit off of people. And our main interest then, and in fact our entire interest, has to be directed toward doing a good job in behalf of farmers or we will not continue to exist. So this puts the pressure on us uh, not to make a profit off the farmers, but rather to make a profit for them. This is a very vital, important uh, difference and basic difference from most other groups. Another very basic, important difference is the type of a battle that we're waging. Uh, we're waging an economic battle where that we're building economic strength uh, so that farmers can compete in today's organized economy. You see, today is not 1950 or 1930, but we're entering the 70s. And Bill, in the 70s, whether we like it or not, uh, we're living in an organized economy. For example, if I buy repairs for my tractor, it's cost more this year than it did last year and almost unbelievably more than it did uh, five years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, there has to be a reason for this. And it's, uh, the reason is that if you trace it back far enough, there are economic power blocks, organized labor. And I'm not critical of the working people getting together to compete. In fact, I think it's uh, something they had to do. But uh, they have been able to bargain out a better uh, wage, a higher wage, and more fringe benefits. Uh, so we pay for that as farmers. Uh, but industry, for example, it just didn't happen that Bethlehem Steel, for example, announced a price increase on steel, and everybody else followed. Now, they didn't have to follow all the other steel companies, or Bethlehem Steel would have had to come down. But it must have undoubtedly been a basic decision of the industry. Why? If the steel industry does not make a profit ratio that's comparable to other segments of the industrial community, it means nobody will buy stocks in the steel companies. So as this profit ratio went up, uh, the farmers pay for it. So what I'm really saying is that uh, we have to be organized so we can pass our increased costs on, uh, whatever they may be, labor, uh, interest, uh, steel costs, or whatever they may be. So what the NFO is all about is building this economic block to compete. Now, as far as any other organization uh, doing something of this nature, I don't see that they have the structure or, and uh, the people because the people that make up this type of an economic battle have to be emotionally different uh, than the people in a normal business operation. Uh, they have to be charged emotionally that they don't want to lose the battle mm -hmm. and that the economic battle is their life and uh, their dedication. Warren Lee, what do you feel is NFO's greatest asset? Well, uh, an organization such as ours uh, really only has one asset, and that's the people that make it up. Uh, because really you start with the members, uh, then you go to the leadership level in the counties, and then on to the leadership level at the national level. 
The people, and this is something I'm proud of, uh, we have one goal as far as leadership is concerned. We think we've already reached it. Uh, but if we haven't, uh, we're not going to take any chances. We're going to surpass what we've gotten now. And that is we intend to build the best staff in America. We think we already have it. Uh, from an educational standpoint, uh, from experience and background, because these people have to be a part of a team. Now, leadership in an organization such as ours is not just one individual, or not two, but it's a leadership team that you're able to develop. And by developing a leadership team, uh, you also divide the responsibility of decision making. I came to the conclusion a few years ago that if I had to make every decision as president of the organization, then it could only get as, as much as or as big as the time mm -hmm. I had to make decisions. It probably get just a little bigger than that, and then when I got uh, bogged down, it'd go down below that level. So consequently, as we have developed capable people, we've not only given them responsibility, but we've also given them the responsibility to make decisions. And by spreading out the decision making, uh, it builds uh, leaders, and uh, then our job is coordinating uh, the total effort. And uh, by coordinating the total effort, uh, building it into a national bargaining structure, which is the only type of structure that can compete with the big companies that buy in every agricultural area. In a few words, how would you describe NFO's leadership as it stands today at the national level, for example? Well, we've made many, many changes uh, by changing departments, uh, by restructuring, uh, by setting up uh, and dividing responsibility of leadership. But the main key point, Bill, is the dedication. I see these people at all levels. They give their time, their money, their efforts, leave their families, not because they want to leave them, but because they're dedicated to a cause. Uh, they don't want to leave any more than the people that stay at home. Uh, they don't want uh, to be gone from their home communities. But they realize that there's no future in agriculture, uh, that there's no future in rural America unless they help build that future and make it. The dedication, the long hours, and not great pay, uh, uh, much uh, lower pay scale many times uh, than, uh, although we're trying to get more competitive on this and are. But uh, it wasn't the money that they're looking at. It's a dedication uh, to a cause. And when you have a cause, uh, you have uh, the, the people that make full commitments uh, for their, of their lives almost and their families. Uh, to that cause, and without that, and the type of an organization we've gotten, uh, we wouldn't make any progress. Mm -hmm. And that's really it. And I, I, this is going to be a little unusual, Bill. Uh, I'm going to uh, do something that uh, probably uh, that you haven't had happen to you many times, and that is uh, you are interviewing, and, uh, but I know that your vast experience in interviewing uh, some of the top industrial leaders of this nation and that in trying to get this story out, uh, a factual story of the NFO as part of the team that you are, that uh, you've been able to meet our leaders, uh, you've been able to compare their abilities uh, with others that you've interviewed in some of the largest industrial uh, companies in this country as well as the political leaders. Uh, so I'll ask you, uh, what is your impression of the caliber of leadership that the NFO has gotten in the dedication? At the beginning I was amazed because I didn't know now it is a matter of, uh, what shall I say, something I expect. These people are absolutely outstanding. Hornley, I don't know that I have adequate adjectives to describe the leadership I have seen, not only here at the national level in Corning, Iowa, but out in the field, out in the counties and in the towns. These people are, first of all, vigorous, young, well-educated, capable, and uh, each has a tremendous sense of dedication. And so the leadership of NFO is the greatest leadership I have ever seen anywhere. Uh, I'm certainly glad to hear you say that, Bill. Uh, we think so, of course. Now, Ornley, why, in your opinion, is NFO important, and to whom is it most important? Well, Bill, of course, the primary importance is uh, to the farmers. Uh, they have remained unorganized. Their prices and many commodities are lower than they were 20 years ago, and that establishes the need. 
Uh, secondly, uh, I do not believe that the rural business people really realize how important NFO is to them. Uh, their accounts receivable are only going to be paid if there are adequate uh, profit returns uh, from agriculture, and that means fair prices. And the NFO is the only tool that there is really to use at this time to do that. And then I think to the total economy. Uh, the people have to realize that the prosperity of rural America is just not farmers alone, but it makes up about 25% of the population of this nation that are dependent directly upon the profit level in agriculture. So consequently, uh, the wealth that it feeds through the entire nation is of vital importance to the entire nation. As you know, U.S. Farm Report fairly recently took a field trip along the West Coast and up into the Pacific Northwest. I would like to report to you that on this trip, it became most apparent that acceptance of NFO is growing, that opposition is diminishing, that membership is soaring. Is this the way it's going all across the country? Really, it is, uh, or there are a few isolated spots here and there uh, that uh, maybe the proper leadership hasn't come forward, uh, or they do not understand uh, the progress we're making. But generally, yes, and of course, in the West Coast and the Pacific Northwest, uh, these people have fantastic investments and operations, and they're businessmen, and they know that they have to work together and they have to do something about spending time and effort to get a price. Uh, so this, uh, this is the fact that uh, now we're succeeding. Uh, you have a situation where that there is full acceptance of the fact we're going to be here, and then the fact that we are succeeding in raising farm prices. On many commodities, uh, the evidence is uh, there's just many price increases nobody expected or predicted. So the only new factor is the NFO. Mm -hmm. So anyone with a logical conclusion or one that will sit down and make a fair analysis will have to realize the NFO is raising farm prices. And yeah. of course, when this happens, it uh, becomes obvious to many people that they'd better get in and do a better job. During our discussion, Orrin Lee, the word dedication has cropped up whenever we've talked about NFO members. Uh, NFO staff people, anyone connected with NFO. This particular adjective, dedicated, also cropped up in a recent interview that took place at national headquarters in Corning, Iowa. Two members of the National Catholic Rural Life Conference came through Corning to visit national headquarters. And while they were here, they talked about NFO and its great dedication. They talked about many of the facets of the National Farmers Organization. Veteran farm news analyst and my colleague Phil Allen interviewed these two distinguished guests, and we'd like for you to share that interview at this time. We certainly want to welcome both of you to the National Headquarters Office of the NFO. Uh, Monsignor Weber, I know that we've talked on previous occasions. Uh, Sister Thomas Moore, supposing we have the rural ladies first, and. Uh, I'd like to have you tell our audience uh, what uh, work that you do with the National Catholic Rural Life Conference. I know you speak at a great many farm meetings and you're well known to farm audiences. Can you just describe your work? Well, I'm uh, a board member of National Catholic Rural Life and I'm trying to uh, implement a resolution that was passed by this organization back in 1964 uh, to work for the Federation of existing farm organizations. So the lectures that I've been given, giving throughout the country uh, in the last, uh, well, maybe almost five years now, uh, have to do with this same message, trying to uh, preach the gospel of unity among farm groups. Uh, what was your impression of the headquarters of the NFO? Well, I'm very much impressed with the headquarters of the NFO. I, th I think, uh, first of all, you uh, obviously have progress progressed uh, in a material sense from uh, your beginnings, but I, I was happy to see that uh, the thing that has always struck me about this organization is present at headquarters, uh, and it's still very much alive, and that's dedication to a cause. I think, I don't know, uh, uh, I know you've done a lot relative to bargaining and pushing the price up, but I think that uh, this organization has contributed something that's much more valuable, really, and fundamental to of farmers, and that is a sense of dedication uh, to a cause. This is one of the reasons why uh, most farm organizations are in the bind they're in. They're, they've uh, lost their sense of purpose, and uh, 
the membership is, you know, pretty deadhead, I think. And um, uh, this sense of dedication, which uh, I see at the bottom, is obviously at the top, too. And this impresses me, the fact that it uh, uh, extends from the top down, and uh, it's still alive. In a farm organization, we're concerned with a number of material facts that have to do with prices and marketing. And whenever we talk to churchmen, uh, we like to get their point of view about what other values you see in the rural life and in working with the institutions of rural America that a church is properly concerned with other than marketing. Now, Phil, in regard to the uh, question of the values, uh, one of the great values that I like to stress are, are the spiritual values that are associated with farming. Now, take, for example, uh, the man plants his crops, he puts the seeds in the ground and so on, but what can he do about the sunshine, about the rain and so on? So there is the opportunity there for this particular individual to think about his relationship with his maker. So there's a natural opportunity there. We might refer to the space age at the present time. I, I am sure that one of the byproducts of our exploration of the moon is going to be that people are going to become more conscious of our creator. Uh, we're so fascinated by the vastness of this and we're only discovering something that somebody else has created already, you know. And so how powerful must God be to make all this? So I'm sure that that's one of the values that I like to stress, spiritual values. May I uh, butt in here a minute? This is one of the things that always puzzle me. Now, I come from outside agriculture. I'm, I'm a laboring man's daughter. And um, the, this has always been preached, you know, how farmer is dependent upon God and all this sort of thing. Uh, if anybody should know the concept of interdependence, it should be a farmer. Yes. Yet he's always bragging about his independence. Yes. And this is a thing that disunifies this, you know, independence thing, don't you think? I think yes. the f farmer isn't aware of this value, of applying the value uh, in his relationship with his neighbor, uh, that he is quick to see as far as his relationship with God is concerned. Right. And uh, so the, there are many social and cultural values that are natural. I know that uh, Pope uh, uh, Pius XII made this statement that uh, the land is the natural habitat for a Christian family because the entire family is engaged in this, in this project of farming. That's yes. theirs. And it works as a unit. It's sort of a, a team. It pulls them together. It pulls all mm -hmm. the family bonds, mm -hmm. strengthens them, pulls Good them together observation. as a unit. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no reason why all the farmers shouldn't accept this concept. A uh, sister pointed that out the other day in one of her lectures about the family concept of all the farmers uh, working together. Yeah. That's right. I, you know, uh, this, uh, every time you come out with these, this uh, explanation of values, which you have done in homilies for these, organiz uh, for these uh, rural life days, I can never see why it is that a farmer can't pick that up quickly and apply it somewhere else. Now, when you're talking about federation of farm organizations uh, and preaching unity with this thing in, in mind, uh, then organizations will come up and tell you this is impossible. Well, I can't see why a family of farm organizations isn't possible. You know, you don't have to be what the other person is. You can each keep your own identity as one does in a family. And so it's just a matter of transferring this concept of uh, the family over to your relationship with other organizations. Well, working for a number of years with what uh, organizations will say to the public, I've noticed in the way, well, for example, the way the press and the broadcasters have covered agriculture, there's been a great deal of stress on production. And this puts one farmer in competition with another. And all, all the time, this seems to be stressed. Uh, I think perhaps you're getting at a very good handle of this situation. If you talk about how they can work together as a family in marketing, whereas most of what's been said in public, it seems to me, is, is how they are against each other and mm -hmm. as producers. Right. Uh, speaking about the marketing angle, see, we're living in such a changing age. At the present time, we're very conscious of it. Oh, yes. We're moving fast. And uh, too many times we are so slow in uh, changing our attitudes and uh, so marketing is one of the areas where the farmers have to change their attitudes because they can no longer exist in the 100 uh, years ago attitude. We've got to come up to something new here, that uh, we have to work together as a team, as farmers from all over the world, marketing together. I mean, and I'm not trying to sell the NFO, but then uh, 
it's a change of attitude that's really required among I think, all the rural people. So right, I agree. And, I, and, and can I push this a little farther and say that oh. even NFO has got to take the concept of marketing, I think, farther than it has, and that is to get the consumer in on this. I mean, mm -hmm. really, the housewives. Uh, the farm organization that I admire very much for this very thing is National Rural Electric, well, the whole rural electric yes. system. When you attend meetings of this group, they are really the only group that I've uh, been associated with in agriculture that uses the word consumer more than 20 times, you know, in a session. Yep. Uh, I think the other farm organizations better latch on to this concept. And now I'm closing, Monsignor Weber and Sister Thomas Moore. Is there anything that uh, you'd care to say to the non-farmers in the audience or perhaps also to the farmers? Well, I think on that point I would say this, that... Uh, if we permit our agricultural factory that we have so greatly established in our country here, if we permit that to be weakened, uh, the end result is going to be that the consumer is going to suffer just as much as the farmer, if not more, because uh, if we weaken our agricultural production, our whole nation is going to suffer. There's no doubt about that. And one final point for the farmer, I think I would add, you have to inform yourselves. That takes a lot of work and sacrifice to inform yourself on what is happening. And as I said already before, we are moving fast. And so we have to put out uh, our information, inform ourselves, and then judge and then act. Sister? I would agree to that, uh, that you said, Father. And uh, I think uh, farmers uh, ought to know that consumers are interested and uh, are willing to support uh, them in this effort. Uh, a report that was made by the Consumer Federation of America uh, and published under the uh, name of uh, a Father McEwen, S.J., uh, stated that uh, consumers realize that there are certain values that are very important that will be preserved if we keep a prosperous agriculture. And so I think consumers are aware, or at least want to help agriculture, and uh, farmers must become uh, uh, aware of their needs, the needs of consumers, and uh, we've got to meet in the middle and we both be ahead. We certainly want to thank you both for your time and your effort in visiting us. We always consider it a great honor to have busy people like yourselves come to the National Headquarters Office of the NFO. Thank you. We're very happy to be here. Orrin Lee, I want to thank you very much for being my guest today. On today's U.S. Farm Report, our special guest has been Mr. Orrin Lee Staley, President of the National Farmers Organization. U.S. Farm Report is seen on this station each week at this same time. Until we meet again, so long, everybody. Mm -hmm.